This is Salamancer, you are watching Sal TV, and if you want to see the world's most stylish medic, I'm pretty sure we found him right here. This is Nosferatu of the Mad Men. He is looking super fine with his uh, nine pipe problem there and that Manco hat. Look at the style on that thing. It is just ridiculous. Anyway, we need to get over to a Demo Man rollout because we are watching CP Granary and Christopha of the Carlos Sagan Foundation is going to be taking this right hand rollout. This is ESCA Intermediate and it is the playoffs. We are into the playoff action, ladies and gents. Uh, Chris gets there quite a bit later than his opposing Demo Man at UNF. Uh, UNF, of course, has been an invite for a while, but Chris, uh, going for the air shots, doesn't manage to hit him. And right now, Mad Men in the blue looking like they are going to win this mid fight hands down. They've lost their medic, Nosferatu. And Mela, the crowd favorite, going to have to retreat here or risk destruction. And he doesn't even. What is he doing? Okay, so he's going to spam. I guess maybe he realized that everybody was there, but he's probably just going to lose his life now. Yeah, uh, you can get away from that. Oh, oh, he is behind enemy lines. That is why he was... Okay. So he's behind enemy lines. He did just try and uh, briefly spawn camp against... Na uh, not anyway. Uh, UNF there. Unf. Which, uh, pretty cool idea, but now he is not going to be useful to the rest of his team. And so I think Mad Men realize this. They are going to start pushing forward very quickly, uh, knowing that there is a roaming soldier behind them. They have to watch out for that. But, I mean, look at how far back Mela is right now. He doesn't know where to go, what to do, because every time he tries to poke forward, they kind of know where he is, and they're going to spam him out. He's just one man by himself. So, uh, right now, it looks like Mad Men are in a prime position. They're going to already be pushing into the enemy's second point. Mela is so far behind right now, he is not going to catch up to this in time. So, it's going to be six on five at this second point. Mad Men are going to be pushing in very soon. Uh, they don't have the Uber yet. Their opponents are actually going to have it first. And so, actually, UNF realizing, hmm, might need a sticky trap here against this incoming roaming soldier. Um... Yeah, the in I'm sorry, the intermediate playoffs just starting on Tuesday, and he does, he takes down Melo right away, beautiful prediction there of where he was going to come from, and this is just non-stop action. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the Mad Men roster, if you guys recognize any of those names, it's uh, a bit of a reunion of some invite players, UNF does get taken down there, so it looks like Carlos Sagan Foundation will hold on to the point for now. But yeah, the Mad Men, a reunion of quite a few invite players, Namely, of course, was on the Space Bills, we're watching his cam right now, and wow, nice decision making to get out there, he is going to die but saved himself for another second or two. Um, yeah, uh, so UNF was on the Space Whales for a long time. Uh, Manly was on the Whales for a long time. Um, let's see. There was also RR, who was briefly on the Whales and is a friend of Namlay's. So those two play together a lot. We are watching RR right now, by the way. Way on! Jumping in, and he's going to be going straight after the demo. The med's already down, so he does get taken out here. But now we're going to watch the power cam, and this, yeah, this is going to be power. Look at his ping right there, Swedes fan. Uh, this guy plays from Brazil. Oh, and they do lose their med coming through here to Ping, whose name, by the way, is actually Spades. So if you've seen a Spades play video games before, TF2, he's played for a long time, but he changes his name like every week, which is just a huge pain. Anyway, Spades. But we're watching Power right now, uh, and this guy has just beastly aim. Like, the uh, the frag vids down in Brazil were basically all composed of Power before he got banned from the league because people thought he was hacking. Um, everybody in the in the United States, the North American scene, they're all like, uh, we don't think he's hacking, guys, we just think he's really good. So that is uh, partially why they have drafted Pawa onto this team, the Mad Men. It's, uh, it's a very star-studded roster here. With Nosferatu and Blank, uh, yeah, Blank playing on the Soldier, I think he actually played Invite Demo Man briefly on Snooplicity, and uh, he was actually on Check 6 in Season 9, but this was not the same Check 6 that went undefeated in Season 8, this was actually a different, they actually went 5 and 11, so not quite the, the penultimate gaming team that he was on, but you know, he still had that Check 6 invite experience, so it's a huge invite roster here, and yeah, I'm sorry, I haven't been calling the game that much, because I've been going over the players, but uh, so far it is still 0-0, zero zero, and we do see Christopher retreating here, and actually leaving his medic to die. But what are you going to do? Sometimes you just got to make those decisions. And uh, Chris not even able to get a sticky trap off. These scouts are going to be chasing him down. He does manage to pop one up into the air, but that double jump will save him from any fall damage. Takes down power, which is going to be good for him, but he is now caught out. And nothing that Spades can do here. He might be able to kill a med even, but I mean, killing the med is almost the wrong decision. You got to go after the players and get them down very quickly. I, well, I didn't think Carlos Singh would be able to hold on to this, but right now they've actually got their med back up. They, uh, they are healing a remedy on the soldier quite a bit. Oh, he does get taken down though, and this aggression from Mad Men is not going to stop. This party is just getting started, and uh, apparently the party is on the last point of the Carlos Sagan Foundation right now. Oh, good old Carlos. He'd be spinning in his grave down in Guatemala, because that's where he's from, Carlos Sagan. Do they have observatories in Guatemala? I'm sure they do. Like, big old observatories in Guatemala. I know they have some in Chile, 
Got some huge, like, radio telescope arrays down there. Sorry, I'm a nerd. But, uh, now we are watching right now the Mad Men going up 1-0 to zero against the Carlos Sagan Foundation in the red. And I haven't gone over Carlos's team yet, but we will go over that in just a minute. But we are going to watch the mid-fight here as UNF decided to take the high ground roll, same as Chris. Now, uh, once again, Carlos Sagan losing their medic right away. And this time around, Nosferatu has stayed alive for a little while. He does finally get taken down, though, so that is one kill by Remedy so far. Is the only kill for the Carlos Sagan Foundation is just spades left. He's going to try and deal some damage here, but, oh, uh, there's nothing you can do against three players like that. Unless you are just, you know, YZ50 or Clockwork. Banny, maybe? But uh, none of these players have those names, so I'm going to assume they're not those players, and this is, in fact, Intermediate. Sort of the top end of Intermediate. Um, going into this game, of course, their rosters were both 11-5, and 5, actually, during the regular season, so the first round of playoffs, they kind of got pitted against each other. Mad Men was ranked 3, Carlos ranked 6 in the seeds, um, so there must have been a lot of 11-5 and 5 records, I take it. Anyway, I, I think that's what I read. Maybe I read it wrong. I don't know. But I'm pretty sure they had very similar records. And so we need to go over the CSF uh, roster here as Mad Men have taken that second point and they are, wow, they are really prepared for an ambush here in case the CFF, C <laughs> the CSF decide to push in. Anyway, we will go over the CSF roster right now though. Uh, we've got Remedy on, looks like a pocket soldier right now, uh, although he, yeah, he is pocket soldier because Mela is on the roaming soldier and if you know Mela, you give him a shout out and tell him that he is getting casted. And then we've got, there, there are no vowels in that name, and it's just Chft. the the medic. Actually, uh, we have known him in the past as Nemzal. He has been in open since. Did I write that right? Has he been open since like season five? I don't think so. I think I wrote that wrong. But he's been in open for a while. ESCA open, and so this might be his first season of intermediate. In fact, a lot of the guys on this team, it's been more or less their first season of intermediate, uh, or maybe their second. Maybe they were over here, you know, in intermediate like a little while ago, a few seasons ago. But uh, with Steve C, for instance. The heavy who just died. He has been I actually played with Tiger in France, I think. He played uh, on the open version of the Mad Men, which is not this version at all. But in comes that push, and uh, Swedes, the sniper, down immediately. Namla and Krustafa trading, but that's actually a good trade for the Mad Men because they're still going to have their demo man up. They do, however, lose RR, and that means. Carlos Sagan Foundation will hold it off for now. They're going to need to get that Uber up fast, though, and RR kind of complaining about lag a little bit. What are you going to do, man? I actually played a pug with him the other day. Um, that was the one that I think I uploaded, maybe? No, I didn't upload it. That's right. Um, possibly because we lost, like, 5 to 0. But it was... Uh-oh. Uh oh. Yeah, pause over. It was definitely fun playing with RR and with uh, Namlay. Namlay does a lot of captaining in... in uh, TF2 Pugs and plays a lot of them too, so if you do think you have the caliber to play in Pug NA, you can end up playing with Namly sometimes. Nice shot there from Powa, and so it does look like uh, Mad Men may be ready to push in pretty soon. Namly on the Heavy actually escaped. That's something you see Heavies do very often. But uh, there goes Powa, he's taken down, and the Carlos Sagan Foundation will hold on for a little while longer. I'm sure uh, Carlos's beautiful wife surviving him would be so proud. And pretty much they're going to sit back here. So I've gone over, what, Steve C, um, Spades, Remedy and Mela, of course, the uh, two soldiers. They have been in open. I think Remedy has been in intermediate, but Mela actually was on open since season nine, so two seasons ago. And he this season might be his first of intermediates. Um, a lot of these guys seem to know each other maybe from the ESCA open scene. I don't know how the team got together, so that would be an interesting story if somebody wants to tell me. But, uh, yeah... That's where we're at right now with Christopha, who I, th I don't think needs much of an introduction because I've casted his stuff before. He... I'll give him an introduction anyway. So he was on the old Water Vapor team, that very like very first team whose scrims I casted, and they got, you know, um, you know, they changed their name after they got sponsored a couple times, Fragnetic and whatever else it was. But uh, Chris was on that team for a little while. He has been playing in the SEA for quite a while. At least a couple of seasons, anyway. And he's been, you know, I think... I don't know if this is the first season of I Am or not, but uh, I don't think he's ever been an invite anyway. So definitely a bit of a s experience discrepancy. I don't know if there's a skill discrepancy, although as we've seen from UNF so far, he is a beastly demo man. So uh, who knows, and right now Christopher does get taken down on defense. That does mean that the Mad Men are pushing in right now. The Ubers are just now fading. The Heavy gets taken out, and the Red Medic actually, I think his Uber was a little bit earlier. 
than the Reds medic. So this is not looking good for the Carlos Sagan Foundation. It looks like astronomy in Latin America is just going to take a nosedive here as it is 2-0 to zero for the Mad Men. And uh, I got to say, the Mad Men, excellent job. UNF there hits the wall, which I'm sure he didn't mean to do. Maybe? Well, maybe he did, actually, because that's a useful thing to do with the medic. Uh, keep yourself in range of that heal beam the entire setup, so you can just get that super buff. And UNF going to be taking this left-hand rollout. So that's going to be a nice, fast rollout for him, immediately launching those stickies up at the top of the ramp, because he knows that's where Chris is. Oh, and he hits that scout coming right out there, so already spades. Look at that, down to 25 health. And down, down to 15. UNF zoning out those, uh, those... Wow. Those health kits so effectively, but he did get taken down there. So now there is an opportunity for the Carlos Sagan Foundation to come back and maybe get up at least one point this half. Uh, they do lose Remedy, but they've killed just about everybody here except for Tawa. And Tawa is going to be in some trouble here. 16 health left. He's trying to escape 41 now. So he, he will be able to get away as the rest of the Carlos Sagan Foundation do stack up and capture middle. Uh, so I guess score one for science right here as uh, these guys look like they're about ready to push forward. Uh -huh. Gonna keep those cookie cutter classes. You did see them look like they were gonna off class, but really that was just because they were trying to change to their forward spawn. How uh, they spawned backwards, and if you change classes, you get to move forwards a little bit when uh, when the middle point is captured. Of course, your spawns move forward depending on which point you own. So, uh, kind of helps you keep keep the aggression moving forward. I mean, if you had to spawn all the way back at the very last point on the map, that would just be ridiculous. <laughs> Matches would just never end. Either that or everybody would play like you know five heavies. Which isn't even I think it's just one heavy that you can have um, per team. But Carlos Sagan Foundation with their Uber. So they are going to be pushing in soon. And I, I kind of want to make like a Carlos Sagan voice joke or Carl Sagan voice joke and be like, you know, billions and billions of human lives, and blah, blah, blah. But the problem is, he's Carlos Sagan. So how do you say that? Like, what do you do? Oh, billions and billions, man! I'm I'm gonna stop because that is so awful. I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, <laughs> oh, please don't sue me. Carlos Sagan Foundation, they're gonna be backing away from the Uber that they have seen, and I do like that move. They're uh, they're keeping the demo man out of harm's way for a little while as the red team is now pressuring pretty hard against UNF and Nosferatu here, and they do take the demo right away. This scout probably gonna finish off Steve C, but it doesn't matter too much as Carlos Sagan Foundation do cap that second point. Uh, actually, it does matter. It is five against three right now, and the Carlos Sagan Foundation, or I guess the uh, found. Foundacion de, de Carlos Sagan. I don't know Spanish at all, so somebody help correct me there. Um, are going to back up to mid. That's too bad. They did get some good kills there, but I, I think they just sacrificed too many players to do it. So, anyway, uh, by the way, ESEA Intermediate. A fun, fun thing to watch. And do look at the positioning of the soldier here for the Mad Men. He takes down Christopher. I like that. It's RR using his uh, ambush positions, and I tell you, when I played that pickup game with him, they actually had me on silver for a little while because they only wanted to pocket uh, RR, and RR, as I was, I was, I was dead all the time, so I was basically watching his cam mostly, and uh, he was ambushing like all the time. He would just sit around a corner and wait for somebody to walk past him and do ambushes. That was one of his favorite things to do, because like, nobody would ever expect it, uh, even though he was RR, and they should have. Anyway. So, uh, Mad Men do lose their med right now, and Namle on the scout trying to defend as best he can, but it is 5v5 with RR, wow, making a huge jump in, and look at how very close he got to killing the medic over here. That is Menzal, Chift, 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 <laughs> I really don't know what that's supposed to stand for. Um... But no, the Carlos Sagan Foundation is going to have a huge uber, well, not a huge uber advantage, but by the time they get to 100%, their opponents will only be at 70. Uh, double sniper, RR and Powa, and both of them insane snipers. So they've got RR over on the, hey, he, RR is covering the left, Powa is covering the right. Uh, this is going to be ridiculous. As soon as the Carlos Sagan Foundation pushes in, they're going to be dealing with not one, but two Nyon aimbot level snipers. So they're going to need to pop that uber as soon as they go through the doors. Because if they don't, they are oh, they're screwed. That's just, there's no other way to say it. Oh, Pawa does spot the, the medic, but he actually whiffs the shot, and there you go. The Uber is popped right away. I think both of these snipers are going to run back and go back over to scout, probably. Um, Pawa staying on sniper, actually, for a little bit, so he's going to try and snipe people off the point, but that's not going to work for them, as their power class has died really quickly to that. 
that's what that's the problem with going two snipers. Um, you know, you're not gonna have those scouts to do any sort of forward screening. And oh, look at this, we've got a pause. Okay, pause over. About 15:01 remaining in this half. That's nice to know. I really wish that would actually like translate into server map time left, but it doesn't. It's kind of too bad. And Carlos Sagan Foundation rolling out. Christopha land stickies up top. I'm not sure what that was all about, but oh, maybe because he knows the scouts have been coming after him, so he decided to try and push that away and then uh, maybe predict them a little bit. Now he has done some good damage to the soldier over here. That was RR going down. Uh, Namley's down as well. So Madman losing a lot of players here, and Christopha going to be trying to lay down some damage on the med as he retreats. Misses that one pipe, but does it matter? Med goes down anyway, and Tawa down as well. So that is a wipeout here for the Madman Carlos Sagan Foundation. Going to be capping their second middle point. And, uh, and they're going to be turning it into a pale red dot. Oh! Oh! I managed to fit that one in. I probably should have waited until they were on the blue team next half, but you know what? I just thought of it now, and uh, it's, it's got to go in there. So the Carlos Sagan Foundation, though, I mean, they have the opportunity to go and bring this to a tie right now. And I do hope they do just that. Because this is starting to look like a game. It has been a game the entire time. I have not been... Basically, there's not been a stop in the action that I haven't been able to talk about, so I appreciate what they're doing. And look at that jumps by the heavy. Bet you didn't know you could do that, but you totally can. You get the heavy up there on the, the high pipe. Makes it very difficult to assault because, of course, the soldiers are going to try and jump in. Look at that. The Uber is already over, and they've only gotten one kill. They did take in the Medic. This Faratu is down, but they've lost the Soldier Remedy. They have shown no signs of, you know, finally doing some damage to the heavy Namle. And Namle will actually escape around this corner for a little while. He's going to try and do some damage to Mela, who is still on the heavy as well. Um... Question, does Mayler play heavy in, I don't think he does, in like Highlander? I forget actually, and I feel bad about that, but the medic is going to go stand on the point and cap it himself, because his heavy is too busy like being spun up, eh? He's just like, yeah, whatever, it works for me, I like it. But it is now 2-2, two to two, all tied up between our dear friends, the Carlos Sagan Foundation, and their mortal enemies, the Mad Men, and their wonderful pink hats. I mean, that is just about as pink as you can get on a demo man, and I like it. Pink grenades? Like, would you want to be killed by a pink grenade? I wouldn't. Okay. Okay. Back. And it does turn out... Wait. There is something... Somebody was saying something or other. Um, I don't remember. But apparently RR did drop. He had to rejoin. Uh, I'm... That's been a question earlier. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Mela actually did play uh, play heavy on Gangsta Gang Gaming in Highlander. He is, I think, on Pyro, though, for the summer. So he's going to be doing some Pyro stuff. Um, oh, UNF doing something interesting here. So it looks like he's doing, you know, just being stupid by standing around and taunting. But what he's actually doing, nobody can see him. But if you taunt like this, he can actually see around the corner. So that is what he's doing. He's using this taunt to gain himself a third-person camera, see around the corner, and just watch through there without ever exposing himself to damage. I like it. I like it a lot. And so we are going to see, I think, a lot of spam coming in. Um, UNF does take a lot of damage there, so we will have to retreat. Skating around. Look at that. That is just the textbook definition of ice skating. Oh, not anymore, though. Spam coming in on the Carlos Sagan Foundation. But they still have these doors trapped up. I mean, they're still playing like a solid team. They know what they're doing on Granary, which is cover all the chokes, spam your opponents, make sure you got enough ammo to keep spamming your opponents. And those Ferrati actually took some damage there, so he won't really be feeling like pushing anytime soon. Um, you know, he's gotten that medic regen back up to 150. And you see Blank getting a little aggressive here, but that rocket just barely missing him. Threading the needle through that window. Probably not what the soldier wanted to happen. And this is, this is how stalemates happen, ladies and gentlemen. CP Granary, Stalemate City. Blank's going to actually jump back and grab the ammo from all the way back here. Uh, there is ammo over on this side as well. He's probably going to take that too. Which, the, you know, the demo probably needs it, but whatever. He's just like, screw it. And, uh... Apparently somebody on stream is watching this and Star Trek Next Generation at the same time, which is just awesome. Good for you. Although I don't know how you can, uh, how you can distinguish between... Well, I mean, the voices are different, obviously, but I'll be talking over everybody unless you only... I don't know. It's a little weird. I can't listen to two, uh, two sets of voices like that at once. Completely screws with my head. Uh, I think Red Team's getting ready to push here, and this is probably a bad idea, honestly. 
Um, Carlos Sagan Foundation pushing through. They do pop their Uber, and look at that. Nosferatu, nowhere to be found. He is going to maybe take a little bit of pressure. No, so he does finally have to pop that, but look at how much later the Uber is. They've kept everybody alive here, because that's just what happens when you are defending a push like this. Um, uh, you, you get a huge advantage. You get to deal a bunch of damage to your opponents as they walk in through the choke points, and, and you get to just be backing away the entire time, fading away when they can't deal any damage to you. So, Mad Men got an Uber advantage, didn't actually use it for anything, uh, which means that we are going to be resetting here for another stalemate. Cool. <laughs> But I guess they didn't like, they only got one pick, and actually the Carlos Sagan Foundation here made the right call in that they dropped back away. They're putting a heavy on the high ground, so Mela once again deciding, I'm going to play some heavy. This is what I know. This is what I do. So like both teams actually using the uh, Scouts Boston Basher to build up that Uber at the maximum rate without wasting any ammunition. The soldiers still exchanging spam, so I think... Mela, I mean, the voice command for Thank You Doctor has probably been played a couple times now, so they probably know there's going to be a heavy up there. Um, and I've got to say, the Mad Men, if I were them, I just wouldn't push here, because trying to go through those choke points, not going to work very well. Um, I mean, they could go for a spy, but even then, a spy trying to get through those chokes is just tough, because you're going to take spam. Then, as soon as you decloak, what's going to happen? Well, look at this. Hey, all they had to do was wait for their opponents to push into them anyway, and that is exactly what they do. The Ned took a lot of damage walking through there, so he did, of course, have to pop the Uber. And there he goes! Ned down, and Namely getting a kill there as well. RR actually jumping around to the flank. And so Chris is going to try and lay down a sticky trap here at the doorway, but, I mean, it's, it's not going to stop the aggression at this point. There's only two players left. It is Mela and um, Chris against the entire Mad Men team. So Mela's just going to go for a back cap as a heavy. And that's not going to work at all, because, of course, his opponents are stacking that point up. Times six on it right now. Nobody left alive to even Time get to it. So uh, UNF just kind of like, nope, that's not happening, man. Sorry. Plus, now, of course, they know that Mela is, once again, behind their team. So they can deal with this however they want to. Uh, it seems like, though, the Mad Men are probably being, oh, sorry about the camera, uh, super aggressive here. And yes, they are, once again, already into that second point. This time around, UNF deciding not to even turn around and bother with Mela. So Mela, oh, now he's taking some scout damage. And he gets taken out. So, uh, the prop is playing heavy. You're just not mobile at all against those scouts, you know. You might be able to hit one or two shots against them, but they will hit every shot against you every time at this level. <laughs> and Power laughing in his face. So that is a half. Mad Men going up against the Carlos Stegen Foundation. So going on in the second half, I think I want to watch the blank roll out. Although, oh no, actually it's going to be a uh, equalizer, so let's find RR. We'll, we'll watch him instead. Um, UNF is watching my stream right now, which is super cool, and what he tells me is that that first Uber the Carlos Sagan Foundation made, um, they pushed in because they thought they could catch him, UNF, uh, alone, because he's holding the right yard by himself. But they couldn't catch him, and so they had to back out retreat. And then the second Uber was just on. And Mad Men going to be... Oh, wow, look at this. RR jumping straight on top of the demo right now, going straight after him first, not even worrying about the med. Uh, and he's going to try and let the scouts clean up after him, although right now Carlos Sagan Foundation, they're low on health, but they are high on players. And if they can get their med healing and keep control of those health kits, they should be able to win this fight handily. Scout, what was he even doing? I think Pau is just kind of screwing around at that point, trying to get up on those windows, because he, he was spotted, and he was just like, I'm not even looking. Not even looking at you guys, just going to jump on the windows. Which, that's cool, you know. Not a uh, not a good survival instinct, but it's cool. I don't know, it could have just been the laggy guy, because of course he is playing on like 200 ping, which is ridiculous. But yes, the Carlos Sagan Foundation. Looks like they want to bring this back up after the half to another tie game. Let's see if they can do it, because I do love me some tie games. Actually, it looks like Christopher is going to be taking a crits Krieg here pretty soon. And he calls mid. Oh, immediately takes down two players. Going to go for even more. He may not be able to hit the rest of these. And actually, his med is down. So no more Chris Tickies coming out of him. It is 4v3, now 4v2. Soldier was trying to ambush over there. But he is now down. And of course, who else but RR trying to do the ambushes? Um, I'm wondering, is Blank or RR actually playing Roamer? RR, I would imagine, is on the Roamer, considering how much he likes to do the, uh, the aggressive, like, ambush type stuff. But I don't know. I, I will have somebody telling me, I'm sure. Anyway, uh, Carlos Sagan Foundation here, hanging out. 
on that second point while they wait to get their uber up. And considering how close these ubers are, if, if uh, yeah, Mad Men's actually probably going to have this before their opponents. They are pushing a player in there right now, but that's probably just going to be, yeah, that is RR trying to jump in once again and deal some damage. Not working terribly well for them. And I'm, I'm reading from UNF and Remedy right now, who are in the same chat, that apparently they're super best friends, they chat a little before bedtime, probably get on Skype and pull up the covers, you know, stare longingly into each other's eyes. I'm sure it happens. Uh, but no, both teams are pretty close to Uber now. Uh, of course, Mad Men have it. And so they will be able to defend against just about anything here that their opponents throw against them, except maybe a sniper, so we're going to check that out. Uh, Sniper's gonna have to be careful though, because it looks like a really forward hold from the Mad Men. You see how close they are to these walls. Uh, Pow actually, like, right there at that choke point. He's gotta be careful peeking his head through there. You know, covered as it is in a, you know, plus 10 armor trucker hat, uh, I'm pretty sure he can still get his head shaved off by a fully charged headshot. And Mela tries to jump in and gets taken down immediately. Find, I wanna find that UNF cam again, because since he's watching the stream, he may as well get some stream time. There is a dispenser over here, which I kind of like. Where is the sentry? Probably watching the point, I would imagine. Yes, it is. So, oh, but there's a spy. So, spy versus engineer. Who wins that one? Well, that's actually kind of a toss-up. It depends. Um, but this is going to be tough trying to get the spy in. Oh, I think he took some damage there, but they might not have realized that it actually was a spy. And look how close they're holding, so this, this invis watch play might actually work really well. Uh, is he... Oh, is he going to go for the sap on the sentry, though? I don't think he will. I think he realizes that's just stupid, because it'll give away that he is a spy. Oh, he pulls out the sapper, but I think he, he knows. He knows. Okay. Thing is, there is no scout right now. He's disguised as a scout, and look, the roster on Mad Men, there is actually no scout. So he's hoping he just doesn't get seen. He did get seen, though, taken down by the sentry. And now, Carlos Sagan Foundation have realized, well, that's not going to work. Not at all. They're laughing about it. I mean, they're, they're still, it's going to be tough for the Mad Men to make a real coordinated push. But you know, I think the CSF actually might have gotten a little complacent here. Uh, they were not prepared for Mad Men to just walk in and start trying to deal damage, but the, the poke from the Mad Men does really well. And so uh, UNF dealing some decent kill damage to his opponents, going for some stickies on that soldier up there too. And actually, Mad Men lose their medic, so that's going to be tough for them. They do get a couple scout kills here. RR down to one health. Find that guy. Oh, he did get back. Okay. So he uh, he managed to escape. Nosferatu will be up pretty soon, but there's going to be a huge uber disadvantage. Carlos Sagan Foundation going to have a nice easy time trying to push in again. And yeah, nobody expects a push out on Granary Last, according to my stream chat. I mean, I don't. So it, was, it kind of took me by surprise, too. But look at that. A bucket full of stickies. If you are looking for a band name, don't use that one. Okay? Don't do it. But, oh, UNF just deciding to lay some pills down all over the place. Maybe expecting a spy again. Just trying to, to put some explosive damage down where a spy might try to de poke, but eh, it's not going to happen. And it does seem as if there is going to be a push fairly soon from the Carlos Sagan Foundation pushing in from the top. And look at how much uh, that soldier was popped up and kept in the air. Power is down now. And that sentry still covering the point. With UNF laying some good prediction stickies down on Christopha, takes him down. There are only two players left alive for CSF right now. They're trying their best to take on UNF, and they do. Blank should be able to finish off this scout, though, or if not, at least do a lot of damage. Namlay coming in with the pistol. Good old NG play. He's probably going to swap out to scout now because his team is actually able to push forward and cap this point. They didn't even have to pop an Uber because they didn't have it. So they defended an Uber push without an Uber of their own, and that is saying something. Um... Not as much on CP Granary because there's a couple different ways you can hold it, and of course Mad Men showing us they're very good at that forward hold, just leaving a sentry back to guard against back caps. So pretty cool. But the Mad Men now pushing in. After having retaken their second, they are being very aggressive here, not even waiting because they know they have an Uber advantage, they're just going to go ahead and place a teleport here, just kidding. They're going to be pushing in right away, not getting any kills with this Uber, but they at least are using it to cap mid, which is a useful thing to do. Problem is, their opponents are going to have Uber pretty soon now as well, and so we're going to watch this Quiz the Pie cam. As he's got a lot of the overheals here. Is it another Quiz screen? It doesn't look like it. It's just going to be a regular Uber, and Quiz gets taken down right away. Actually, this is some really good aggression by the Mad Men. They're jumping in, forcing the Uber right away. 
Um, so the Carlos Sagan Foundation do still hold on to this point. Steve C trying to chase down Nosferatu, and he does manage to get him with the Luger Morph. So now Mad Men are hurt men, but still able to take down... That was uh, RR, I think, taking down the Medic while killing himself. So kind of a sad thing, but you know what? He did exactly what he wanted to do there. And so the Carlos Sagan Foundation have held on to mid, but uh, they're going to have a slight, maybe three or four second uber disadvantage here as Nosferatu has just started killing people. Christopha laying down the classic. We're going to have to call that the Banny Trap now. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, uh, it, there, it has its own little frag video. And oh, I forgot to turn off Steam notifications. Crap. Oops. Well, I'll do that for next shoutcast. <laughs> Anyway, um, no, that's that's definitely going to be called the Banny Trap now, because it is exactly what Banny used in that one Quantic versus Flow game to basically start their comeback from... Whoa, what? Okay. To start their comeback from, what was it, like, 0 to 4, or 1 to 4, and they went 5-4, and they ended up getting 4 kills, which is that one sticky trap. Super ridiculous. So, uh, we're calling out the Banny spot. But now, of course, Carlos Sagan Foundation trying to push a little bit further forward. Christopha taking his high ground perch. He will take fall damage as he falls down from here, but the medic should be able to catch him just fine and maybe even give him a little bit of a buff before he takes that damage. And nope, not going to happen at all, but it doesn't matter. Because right now they are still in a bit of a standoff situation. Yeah, obviously, Carlos Sagan Foundation feeling a little bit goosey about pushing in. I say goosey not for any, you know, any old reason, but because I actually played a little Flash game today. Um, what was it called? Oh gosh, what was it called? It was some game about birds. I don't even remember. Oh my gosh, I don't remember what the game was called. It was like a demo. Oh, you went up with a nice sticky trap, so we're going to shut up about that for a little while. Uh, as already, the Uber is in a bad timing and a bad spot for Carlos Sagan Foundation. They are taking a bunch of damage from their opponents. Good kill by Chris, but uh, Namely does manage to finish off the med there. Mela, ooh, yeah, he's thinking he can try and do some damage here, and he did some damage, he just didn't get any kills, plus there's nobody left who can really clean up for him, so now the Mad Men on the warpath. Sorry, I play, it, was, it was a game about, like, birds flocking, it was, like, super, uh, it, was, it was not Angry Birds. Okay, it was not Angry Birds. It was, uh, you, you basically fly around as a, you know, uh, as a, you start out as a Canadian goose, and you get to collect a flock, and you have to avoid planes. It was a pretty chill game. But uh, I'm a pretty chill guy, so I enjoyed it. If you do get a chance, it was like one of the up-and-coming games on Congregate.com, which is uh, obviously what I do at work all day. And now the Carlos Sagan Foundation sitting back, trying to hold their yard in front of the second point, but really they're not going to be able to hold it against an Uber. What they want to do is delay their opponents for as long as possible, f you know, force them to take a weird route like this, or else force them to take a lot of damage going in. But actually, this route I don't think was completely expected by the Foundation, so the Mad Men pushing in. They're actually pushing in the last. They are not going to give their opponents any sort of time to retreat here. Uh, or maybe they are. As the Carlos Sagan Foundation actually played that pretty well. Nosferatu now down. And Remedy 420 Kawaii. Just doing some spam, laying it down for the moment. They are trying to get their Uber back up because they should be able to push on this. Maybe, oh, maybe not. Because there's five enemies up right now, not a bit of damage done to them. Uh, they're probably going to have to pop an Uber here. They're trying to take the second point back, but they are at severe risk of a back cap. And there was a sticky trap above that point, too. So UNF still doing work. Uh, what is his score right now? He is a top fragging for his team. So that works pretty well for me. If, if I can top frag as a demo man, which I can't, I would be very happy. Apparently it's not up and coming? What? Oh, it is. It's Endless Migration. How is that not up and coming? Oh my gosh. 2009? Oh, my stream chat's trying to help me out here. Wow, okay. So somebody said that was a demo and something else was coming later in the fall. I was like, that's super cool. But, hmm. Okay, weird. Anyway, it was a chill game and I liked it. I liked it a lot more than doing work. Why should I stop calling it the Carlos Sagan Foundation? It's, the, it's, it's called the Carlos Sagan Foundation. That's their team name. Okay, anyway, somebody was getting angry at me in stream chat. I need to get back to casting. Carlos Sagan Foundation is going to be hanging out on their second point, which they did manage to recapture pretty well after their opponents lost the men. So I like that. I like that they managed to make the right call there. It's just the Mad Men still have a bit of a, an advantage here in initiative, and they do manage to use that to take down Mela. Now, of course... The Foundation is going to have to retreat, probably. They do force an Uber out of Mad Men, and that's important. Um, 
they... Ooh, are they going to make a play to defend this? I don't know if that's the right idea. They're going to have a scout chasing down the med. who goes for an Ubersaw. doesn't manage to hit it, but he's got some defense now, so he will stay alive. Meanwhile, two players down. That is uh, both the scouts for the foundation, and this is going to be a problem. Chris Fa trying to defend that medic desperately, and he will be able to do so for now, but he won't be able to defend the point. Laying a bit of damage down, but look at how much overheal there was on RR as he was capping it. They were not going to get a kill on him anytime soon. And so the Mad Men now regain control of second. And that looked like a pretty good push for the Mad Men. Pretty darn good. They managed to uh, lay down the law there against the CSF. Pretty much because they, even though they Ubered early, the Foundation, their counter Uber was, was just a weirdly timed thing where they tried to pop back in and use the Uber to push back in through the choke points and they didn't get a lot of kills with it because everybody on Mad Men pretty much just walked away. So, now just about pulling out the pain train, wanted that pain train kill, but you know, not gonna happen. And so the Cardinals Sagan Foundation now sitting back on their last point. You know what? That's okay because I'm sure they will make an entire video series about how TF2 is uh, is progressing astronomy. I don't know in Guatemala, Nicaragua, something like that. I know a Nicaraguan guy. He's pretty cool. He's got a he's got kind of a weird outlook on life, but uh, he's a pretty cool guy. Anyway, now we have RR on the spy, and of course the the roaming soldier. This is just kind of what you see out of a roamer sometimes, is um, doing this kind of stuff, because as a soldier, you know you're going to be versatile, right? You have the opportunity to respond to a lot of different situations, but sometimes as a roamer, you realize that your only goal in your life is to kill the medic, especially on something like this, where you're trying to invade the enemy's last point. And so when your only goal is to kill the medic, or at least get a very high-value pick like the Demo Man or the Heavy... Well, sometimes soldier isn't really what you need. Sometimes you got to go to that specialty class, the spy, or the sniper, or something. And so RR, of course, being a very good at sniper, we do see him do that sometimes. But this time around, he's decided on the spy. The difficulty is getting past the enemy team, getting up on that pipe, which is going to be a lot of fun for him. While he's still invulnerable, or, uh, invisible, not invulnerable. <laughs> that would be a little OP. Dead ringer, hint, hint. Um, <laughs> just kidding. But... Oh, he was spotted? No. Apparently nobody paying attention to the fact they just bumped into him. So, oh, he could be cloaked anytime he wants to. He's just got to be careful right now that he doesn't get spotted. But everybody's facing forward, so he should be able to get this. I think he's got this. He's got this. Oh, not everybody's facing forward. The medic may be sneaking a peek here and there. Um, so madmen need to kind of make a distraction. And they're probably talking about that right now on their comms. You know, RR is just like, okay, well, I want to get this pick, but they're looking at me, or they're looking in my direction, so... Oh, and you know what? I think they've actually spotted... Yeah, they realize it's a spy now. I don't know who spotted him, but they've called spy, because you can see they're all shooting each other, they're all spy checking, and yet, gets the pick anyway! That is RR getting a ridiculous double kill there on the medic and the soldier there, Mela. So, uh, he's going to be happy about that one, and we do now have, just because of that, a madman pushing in, Gonna be able to catch this last point, and they will bring it up to what is it, four to two, pretty soon here. Wow, with Power running in on the heavy and getting that last kill on Spades, looking good. So yep, it, you know sometimes you, you get a little upset. I get a little upset anyway when it's like, okay, I knew there was a spy there. All right, I knew he was there, but he killed me anyway. <laughs> Turns out just knowing, well, when they say knowing is half the battle. That's true. It's only half the battle. The other half the battle is actually taking some action on that knowledge, and the uh, Carlos Sagan Foundation got a little distracted by the fact that Mad Men were actually pushing in on their doorstep. You can't blame them for it, but uh, that's what lost them around. So now Pau had taken the high ground here against a scout, a bombing soldier, and he has taken down the first casualty of the mid fight. So I, can I pick him or what on that camera? Christopher trying to lay down a bunch of spam against his opponents, but yeah, he does have the high ground advantage, which is nice. Uh, but his opponents actually have a medic healing them, so it's not going to be too big of a deal. And he does, yeah, he does decide to drop down. Going for kills on this scout who's invading his space, getting his personal bubble here. And actually, I was surprised that he wasn't killed before then. 11 health there. 
Um, but this fight is going in the direction Oh, <laughs> the Uber saw. I'm sorry, not the Uber saw. The Equalizer from Blank. Taking down spades. <laughs> suspicious. Okay. Whatever, power. Talking about some suspicious stuff. Carlos Sagan Foundation, though, back on their second point already. They've got an Uber. They want to defend this, but can they make it happen? I think they should be able to, actually. Because they've got a bunch of players up now. They shouldn't have much of a problem. Uh, for now, anyway. And, uh-oh. Just kidding. I don't know why I said uh-oh. Well, uh-oh, the unfluous hurts. I don't know why he was hurt. He was probably just trying to get up the rest of his team. So, pretty soon, the Mad Ben... I would expect to see them push in. Unlike between between um, this yard that they're in now and middle, when you're pushing in between yard and second, you've got enough options available to you that uh, you can kind of take your enemies by surprise, pushing in from whichever one you choose. So, yep, soldier coming upstairs. He will try and take that, although Christopher kind of trying to stop that. But once again, Mela dying there. Oh, excuse me, on the flank, and that is going to mean probably a push-in from the Mad Men pretty soon. Uh, UNF was hoping somebody would walk out of there, but they didn't, so he's just going to have to walk in and try to avoid sticky traps. Two players now down for the foundation. And look at the damage coming in from this guy as well. He is forcing Ubers left and right. So the Mad Men, of course, counter pop almost immediately, but they're going to have uh, still a nice one second or so advantage there. Namla getting taken down for some reason by Steve C, who got away. Scott Free. Christopher now trying to deal some damage to his opponents on that point. Not able to really get anything to happen, though. And um, So he probably needs to go grab some ammunition. That's what he's doing right now. He's just going to lay down a couple points. Namla on the spy. So we got to see RR kill it as the spy, and now we get to see if Namli can do the same thing. What kind of watch is he using? The same exact watch, the Cloak and Dagger. So he's just got to make sure he can find an easy entrance. Somebody's got to open this door for him. That's the thing. And a soldier will open that door. So he's going to pretend like, oh yeah, it was totally the soldier. It's not because we're trying to get a soldier, uh, spy in there. Nice kill by Spades, though, and Spades, a good sniper in his own right. I remember seeing him on a team with Beat, I think. I forget, was that Immortal 6 or something else? But, uh, was it Spades? Yeah, he was on Mortal 6, so I think I saw him sniping with that team a couple times. Uh, Namely spots the Engineer, and he's just like, ooh, pray. But we'll see if that actually happens that way, as there is also a Sniper hanging out and guarding it. And he may just want to go for the Med. Who knows? Med's holding pretty far forward, though, and oh, do they realize there's a Spy there? There was some Spy checking going on. But we'll see if Namely can actually end this game as a Spy. Able to remember that it is four to two right now, so the next point for the Madman wins. Oh, Namle, you are screwed, my friend. They know. They know. Although he actually managed to get away with it for now, and he is sitting around behind the engineer setup. People are going to be looking for him though, so he's not going to. Oh, they didn't see that. They did not see him up there, even though he got down to 27 health. So he is actually still in position to do maybe a sap. Let me just get a stab on the sniper. Oh, we gotta be so careful. Oh, the sniper should know he's there. <laughs> They're still not hitting him. This is ridiculous. This is the most ridiculous action I've ever seen with a spy. They, they all know he's there, but it's such a wide open map that they can't find it. And so he's just causing mayhem back here. The problem is the madman can't really push in with this for now. But I mean, he's ready. And there he goes for the sap. Lays down a sapper on the sentry just before he dies, but the engineer will, I'm sorry, will fix that up right before it dies. And so the Carlos Sagan Foundation are trying to defend this, but right now there is somebody standing on the point. He is going to get taken down by a remedy, so a nice kill there by a jumping soldier. And so Mad Men only have four players left alive. They did not really manage to make anything significant happen. Steve C did die there, but he may just come back up on the scout. Yeah, so not a big deal. Uh, he doesn't even have to rebuild a sentry this way. And so the Mad Men are going to be sitting back and trying to rebuild that Uber, thinking of a different way to get in, and that different way is going to be Powa on the Sniper. So Powa, can you win the game for the Mad Men, or will this just flop abysmally? And I don't know, man, I think I think he's got it, actually, because Powa, I've seen him snipe in pickup games. He plays in Pug and A, despite the fact that he is a South American. Uh, he does play a lot in Pug and A, and so I've, I've seen him snipe. And pretty much, uh, he, he hacks off everybody there who's not on his team. They're just like, oh, why are you letting Powell snipe? Come on, guys. 
pretty soon we're going to see why exactly that happens. Because he is a sniper for the ages. He's going to have to go up against Spades, though, who is a good sniper in his own right. And there is a nice little sticky trap right there. But I don't think it's going to matter. And now it is going to be... Oh! UNF getting taken down with the sniper down as well. Is that going to be the pick they needed? Probably not. And there you go. Actually, uh, the Carlos Sagan Foundation get a nice pick. They're going to push in with... Dealing a lot of damage, but they will have to back away now because when you try to push in against the Uber Heavy, look at this. I mean, he's, he's back up to above, above 300 health. And he's going to be just sitting there defending that second point. It's a, a nice choice of class by the Mad Men. The Foundation trying to push out here because they realize, look, if we don't get a push together pretty soon, we may end up losing the game just by points, not even by actually getting to five. And, oh, no, that push actually not working out for them at all as uh, that was... Power and UNF going huge. They are going to end up winning the game with that capture. That is GG 5 to 2 for the Mad Men, so they will go on to the winner's bracket. But the Carlos found it, found it, blah, 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 the Foundation, not out of it yet. They will go on to the loser's bracket, and so they have a chance to continue on in this tournament at the end of ESEA Intermediate Season 11. So do stay tuned here and on X Television, where we're going to be bringing you all kinds of coverage of all of these games. Stay tuned, everybody. It's going to be awesome.